I have the pleasure of introducing Marcy Harris. Marcy is a former congressional staffer, lawyer, and co-founder and CEO of PopVox, which since 2011 has delivered millions of verified constituent messages to Congress through its neutral, transparent online platform and catalog the policy positions of thousands of advocacy organizations. She was named one of Fast Company Magazine's top 100 most creative people in business in 2012, received a Tribeca Film Festival Award for Creative Disruption in 2012, and was listed as one of DC's Tech Titans. That's a cool title, Tech Titan, by a Washingtonian magazine in 2013, a 2013 Fast Case 50, and a 2014 Digital Citizen of the Year. Honor to introduce. Marcy Harris with Pop Fox. Thank you, thank you. Oh, it's so it's so exciting to be here. I actually live in Redwood City, and I get so excited that uh, the innovation that happens in Silicon Valley. Oh my gosh, <laughs> is is uh, is spilling into and being a, a part of our government here in the Valley. Uh, so thank you so much, Supervisor Slocum and uh, Assemblymember Kevin. Uh, I I really uh, want I had I have a presentation and I will get to it, but one of the things about Alex's talk just really made me think about how much so many of us who either work in government now or previously worked in government have been moved by something extraordinary that got us there, and so. One of the things that I often say when asked, you know, how in the world did I end up working in a, from law school to a tech company, uh, is, is that my first startup was a town. Uh, and that goes back to the story when I was working on a, a local election campaign for our mayor in Jackson, Tennessee, which is where I'm from. And the night before the election, I had just put up my final yard sign. I had the blisters. They were beautiful. Uh, and a tornado came through. And, and struck the town and destroyed the downtown, destroyed the, the, uh, the, the residential area next to it. And uh, yard, sti yard signs were still standing, amazingly. Uh, but in the midst of the chaos, I contacted the candidate and I, I said, you know, what should I do? And he just said, find out what people need and get it. And for the next year and a half, that was my job. Uh, so I, I worked out of City Hall, but I ended up doing a whole lot of talking with people in homes that didn't have roofs and going to Washington to try to get money to rebuild the town. And it had to go through this program or that program with this study and that study and going from people sitting in your office without a home to bureaucrats on the Hill telling you that in two years, maybe the appropriation will be made that could fund the, the thing that you need. It was just a, a, an enormous experience of what happens on the ground being so truly impacted by what happens in the halls of government. Uh, so that was what took me to law school and eventually to Capitol Hill, where I worked for an East Bay member uh, and uh, learned all about how Congress worked. Uh, and as you might have heard, Congress has a few issues. Uh, <laughs> But uh, they, they say in Silicon Valley, if you want to start something, you need to start with a problem. Uh, so we started with Congress, and there are plenty of problems to work on. Uh, so PopVox is the company that I left Congress to work on with a wonderful co-founder named Roshna Chowdhury. And the goal is to rethink online civic engagement, technology-enabled governing, accountability, and the 21st century legislature. Uh, and I think we've been talking a lot about that today. I, I think it loops in very well with the panel that was held before, with the discussion of open data. One thing I just want to put an asterisk on when the question came up for OpenGov about what is the benefit of this kind of data and data standardization in cities and counties using these tools. It's the ability for uh, information and for participation and for data in different cities to, to feed into platforms like PopVox. So every time uh, the city of Redwood City or Belmont or San Carlos has data that is standardized, it makes the, the universe of tools that are available to that city and to the, the citizens of that city uh, exponentially uh, more available. So moving on, let me tell you about PopVox. Our mission is to connect, and connect people in their government, empower effective participation, and create a transparent record 
that informs policymaking and fosters accountable, responsive governing. Uh, just to kind of set the groundwork of the problem that we wanted to solve. Uh, when I was a congressional staffer, uh, as some of you may also be recovering staffers out there, uh, what I realized is that members truly care about their constituents and truly want to hear from their constituents. They just don't want to hear from the whole internet. And that's what was happening in, in 2010 when I was there. That's what continues to happen in so many ways. Uh, also, there are tremendous uh, resources on the outside to completely bombard Congress with incoming information. Tweets, email, Facebook, calls, petitions. I mean, some guy drove a gyrocopter to the hill, remember that? Uh, but it's very difficult to know if all of that incoming is actually from real people or especially if it's from constituents. And then the professional advocates, many of whom have very good um, intention, but it, it sometimes takes a professional to focus the ask. What I found was that the general public was saying, don't raise my taxes, save the whales, you know, et cetera, whereas the ask from a professional was very focused uh, and was very specific and was very actionable. So these were the problems that we were, and then obviously when you've got a ton of, of incoming, it's very difficult to process. And what we found is that people who felt that their voices weren't being heard, the natural reaction to that is that you just yell louder. Uh, so uh, acrimony increases. So our solution at PopVox was to create a system that would begin to align the needs and incentives of all of the participants in the legislative process. So we start with the bills, Organizations come create a profile and post their positions to support or oppose, and individuals can come and share their story. And this was especially important to me as a former health staffer who met so frequently with people who were impacted by this or that illness, who were advocating for more health funding or by this or that um, uh, you know, particular payment policy. I would come back just so moved by the stories that I heard and think somebody else, I shouldn't be the only one hearing this. This should be public, this is, should be a part of the discussion as these bills are considered. Uh, these, these personal stories should be taken into account. Uh, so PopVox delivers these messages to Congress but also catalogs them in a transparent way. And you can see that there are various organizations uh, from the small uh, you know, organizations that came together around a particular cause to uh, larger organizations and trade associations that have used PopVox to, uh, to coordinate their campaigns. Uh, this was an internet campaign uh, around Neil deGrasse Tyson going to testify in front of Congress about funding for NASA. And then all of a sudden, all these supporters on the internet got together in a very organized way and used PopVox to contact Congress around more funding for NASA. Sopa Pippa was a big one. Um, we're now officially integrated with the House internal intranet, so if a Democratic House staffer goes to do a search, they'll see the positions that people have uh, posted on PopVox, they'll see the map and opinion data, but we also deliver to every office, so regardless of party or Senate or House, if someone leaves a message on PopVox, it gets delivered to the member of Congress in a very structured way, knowing that it's coming from a verified constituent. And it's also cataloged by the Library of Congress, so it's now a part of the digital archives of the United States. Um, so kind of what I was talking about before, as I mentioned in the previous panel, we really see ourselves as a player in a larger civic infrastructure. Our goal is to be one piece of the puzzle that fits together uh, to create a more engaged public, to create a more informed public, to create uh, opportunities for government to work better. So we're working with APIs and other ways that, that various developers, whether for-profit or non-profit, public or private, can use our data, and likewise, that we work and play well with theirs. And coming in January 16, uh, we'll be launching PopVox California. So right now we're working with partners. We're, we're all we're studying up our California legislative procedure. Uh, and working on the technology to make it possible for citizens of California to come to PopVox to interact and get updates, not just with federal legislation, but also with the, the legislation pending in California. It won't look exactly like this, but we're starting to work on mock-ups. Um, 
But as a part of that, I just want to share the theory and principles of the way that we go about this. And I know it's just so terrifying when you see a slide full of text. Uh, but number one is that we assume best motives on the part of everyone. So we don't think that uh, Congress is corrupt. We don't think that uh, legislators are there for any reason other than to serve the public, as well as the advocates, as well as the public. We also think that your civic identity is different from your social identity or your professional identity. That when you interact in a civic way online, you have different privacy um, expectations, you have different uh, needs. It's very different than sharing your photos on Facebook. Uh, and that as the amount of influence of public engagement grows in the legislative process, it's important that there's a verified neutral infrastructure and record of that engagement. Uh, we want to reduce the barriers to participation, leading to a broader uh, span of people who are participating. Sometimes you have, you talk a lot about the digital divide. There's also a free time divide. People with lives find it very difficult to get to the public meeting. Uh, and I'll jump down to the bottom because I'm out of time. But again, as I mentioned before, doing civic tech right, in our opinion, requires that mission-driven organizations work together with each other for government and for citizens. So thanks so much. Please get in touch and follow our new Popbox California Twitter account that we set up for today. Thank you.